doesn't love these people is a hater. Part of the problem. What a tree. It's not standing beside the water. Did the cops beat you or something? Uh -huh. They beat you up? Uh -huh. Okay. Multiple times. Here in Oakland? No. They were. Pleasure is used Michael Mullen. The mayor, 
the police and Wall Street are hoping that the winter will kill the movement. Not in California. Now. understand that this is a leaderless organization with tens of millions of spokespeople. Not in California. They also don't understand that weather is not the problem facing us. No, it's not. The weather is the least of our problems. Global warming. Yeah. But the global warming. city is not going to stop that they this cause. incredible movement. Let me just give you an idea, uh, because I've been traveling the country, what I've seen. Uh, there's a town about maybe 150 miles east of here called Grass Valley, California. Yeah. Hey. Where the hell is Grass Valley, right? I smell democracy. <laughs> Nobody across the country knows Grass Valley. And of course, the media doesn't know Grass Valley. Good. But last weekend in Grass Valley, there were 400 people participating in Occupy Grass is at each of these. You can see it right now. I can see it. I'm sitting here looking at the mosaic that this country is right now. Right here in Oakland. This is... We're, we'll get the cameras to turn around here. You know, I, I don't understand it either. I've wondered this for a long time. Uh, and I've tried to explain to them that this is not what people want to look at while they're eating dinner. And the food. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's true, bro. <laughs> it's funny, bro. <laughs> but I'm getting healthy. <laughs> I'm now in my tenth month with no red meat. And that will be the sound bite on the evening news. <laughs> yeah. Go down. Now, this is the first of these that I've spoken at where there's an amplified sound system. Uh, what laws are we breaking here? <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Kwan is having a press conference right now. Um, no. uh, recall. This is a press conference. Recall. I sent her an email asking if we could uh, speak um, while I was here. Uh, but huh. I have to tell you, the other night, uh, both Tuesday and Wednesday night, um, not being here and watching from afar uh, what took place here. Uh, was really horrifying uh, to see this in this country. Um, it made it made it made the rest of the people in the United States aware of something that maybe many of you have been aware of for the last decade, and that is the militarization of our local police department. Yeah! The Congress is not allowed to tell the public how much is spent on Homeland Security. But these local police departments all across the country over the last 10 years have sucked up literally billions of dollars Absolutely. to buy sophisticated equipment, to buy armaments that you use in a war zone, to buy tanks, to uh, set up spying systems. Uh. Yes, we paid for this. And... Um, and to prepare for what they believe is the inevitable, which is the people, sooner or later, aren't going to take it any longer.
10 years, 10 years after 9-11, the majority of Americans realize who the real terrorists are. They're the people who, who create policies and who do things that literally do kill people. For instance, uh, the Congressional Committee last month released these figures. They wanted to find out how many Americans die every year because simply for the fact that they don't have health insurance. They didn't go to the doctor because they didn't have insurance. Nearly 45,000 Americans die every year simply because they don't have health insurance. My friends, that is 15 9-11s every single year. A system, a system that is set up to harm our own citizens. A profit-making insurance system. Who said that it is morally correct to make a profit off people when they get sick? How sick is that? That's sick. I can tell you how much money has corporate America made from these two wars. These two illegal, immoral wars. How much have they made? We are still spending over $2 billion a week on these wars. What could we do with that money if it was here in Oakland and Flint, Michigan and across the country? Somebody asked me, coming in here, who organized this? We, who organized this? I know, I know, I know you think we the people organized it, right? Yes, <laughs> the Tea Party. Where's Wells Fargo? <laughs> I just passed it on the street. It's a if you want to know who organized this, they organized it. We're Michael Moore. This. Bank of America organized this. I know. ExxonMobil, BP organized this. They did more by simply putting their boot on the necks they of millions of Americans. They finished it. We go and like any human being, like any human being, how long can you keep a boot on your neck? Michael Moore is here. Not one more second with a boot on the neck. across the country, um, and that is um, America, contrary to what maybe many here believe, and the way it's portrayed to us in the media, America is not a conservative country. Most Americans are actually quite liberal in their beliefs. They may not call themselves liberals, but if you look at any of the polls, the majority of Americans come down on the liberal side of the issue on just about every single issue. The majority of Americans are against these wars. The majority of these Americans of Americans want universal health care. The majority of Americans believe women should be paid the same as men. The majority of Americans want stronger environmental laws, not weaker ones. And for the first time last month, in the poll that was taken, for the first time, 54%, the majority of Americans, say they believe gay marriage should be the law of the land. That's the, that's the country you live in. And I know to people in the Bay Area, it may seem to get a little scary as you head toward Richmond. Um, or
truck stops. Um, <laughs> As you go across this country, you see that that's the country you share. The people out there, that's why they're in a group. That's why 72% last week said they believe taxes should be raised on the rich. 72%. So, so to the media who are here, um, this is a few thousand people, but everybody here represents a few thousand more, or a few ten thousand more. Everybody here. That's how hard this is. That's why it can't be stopped. Too many people have been thrown out of their homes. That's right. Too many people have had their schools decimated so that their kids aren't getting a proper education. We now live in a country with 40 million adults who are functional illiterates. How did that happen? We're being oppressed. It benefits, it benefits those in charge Absolutely. to have an ignorant population. That's right. Dumbing us down. With 40 million people in it that cannot read and write above a fourth grade level. That's right. Who benefits from that? It's like they've set up the schools now to make sure that you can operate the cash register at McDonald's right. and you know how to greet someone in a sentence with a noun and a verb in it as they come into Walmart. That's right. Let me tell you, let me tell you who does know that this that the people of this country have had it and that there's a very progressive thread and vein going through this country right now. That's the other side. Wall Street, corporate America, the right wing. They know, they know this is a liberal country. All you have to do is turn on talk radio or Fox News. They're so angry. They're so angry, aren't they? Let me ask you this. If this was a conservative right wing country, wouldn't, if you turned on Fox News every night, wouldn't they just be... Yippity doo da, yippity day. They're not that way, are they? They're like, ah, every night is ah. They're just, they, there's a reason why they want to suppress the vote next year. There's a reason why they're passing laws throughout the country to make it harder for poor people, for senior citizens, for people of color to vote. There's a reason they're doing that. Uh-oh. What's the reason? They know, they know, no, it's very simple. They can do math. They know they're in the minority. They know they're in the minority. Otherwise, really, why would you want to suppress the vote we if have you the don't electoral want to vote with you? <laughs> you wouldn't do that, would you? No, if you believe, if you believed America was with you, you'd be setting up voting booths in every aisle of every Walmart. <laughs> That's not what we're doing. Um, I also want to tell you, especially those of you who have been uh, camping out here, um, being treated that way 
by the people that we fund with our tax dollars. That's right. I don't pay people. I don't pay people to take a gun or a tear gas gun and point it at me and hit me in the head with their ammunition or their tear gas canister. I think all of us want to send our best wishes, our prayers, our good karma, everything that we can muster to Scott so that he is better and well. Because it is a movement of equals. Everybody has something to, to give to this. We're all in this together. We're going to sink or swim together. Yeah. Yeah. That's our choice right now. One struggle. When, when they... When I was there last night, somebody asked one of the people in the media tent, what are the goals? What are you trying to accomplish? And he said, well, he said, our mission is in our name. Occupy Wall Street. And then he said, period. And I thought about that for a second. Occupy Wall Street, period. In other words, it isn't just about these encampments. It's that we're not stopping until we, the people, occupy our economy that runs this country. Because our economy, our country, we're the ones that are going to pay. And, and when somebody says to me, well, you know, what's the goal? What's the end game? And I say, well, let me tell you something, first of all. We've already had a number of victories in our first six weeks. And let's acknowledge those victories. All right? Number one, number one, we have killed despair across the country. That despair is dissipating right now. This movement has killed apathy. Yes. People have got up off the sofa. They turned off dancing with the stars. And they're out in the streets. This is a victory. We're missing Here's the news. something very important we've done. Six weeks ago, what was all the media talking about? All the politicians in Washington, all the pundits. What was the what was the national discussion that we were a part of that they determined? What were they talking about? The debt ceiling. The debt. The debt ceiling. The deficit. We've got to reduce the deficit. We've got to reduce the deficit. Over and over and over, all summer long. The debt ceiling. The deficit. The debt ceiling. The deficit. Can I ask you honestly? When's the last time in the last few weeks you heard them talking about the debt ceiling? <laughs> this movement has shut down that bullshit discussion. That's right. Uh, that is a huge victory. You have altered the national discussion. You have altered it. This is what people are talking about in every town and city and village across America. In case you're not we aware, are stronger police than any rubber bullet or a bean bag or tear gas canister. I don't need There's too many of us. And what are they defending in the first place? A broken system and a country that has benefited the few at the expense of the many. The time for that to end is right now. I'll tell you what I'm happy about, and I, I have been a bit giddy and, and overjoyed these last few weeks because at the end of my last film, I was pretty dejected. Uh, if you did happen to see it, and I, and I didn't. And, and, and I said at the end of the film, as I was wrapping the crime scene tape, around the New York Stock Exchange, um, that uh, I just really, I don't know if I can keep doing this, I don't know if I want to make another film, because I keep making these films, and it's, 
you know, you just wonder, when's this going to happen? When's it going to happen? And I said at the end of the film, let me know, audience, or people, when you want to when you want to do something, I'll do it with you. It's a little rough being the poster boy on Rush Limbaugh for Fox News. <laughs> and they can get away with it when it's uh, just a Michael Moore or Naomi Klein or a, uh, you know, an even number of other great people that have, have been busy on this issue for many years. Um, but when there are a million uh, Naomi Kleins or 10 million Michael Moores, they won't know what the F to do. <laughs> of this movement is written. This week in Oakland, California will go down as a watershed moment. People, people across America were disgusted by what they saw here. When average Americans trying to stand up and peacefully assemble to be brutally savage and attacked by the police department that they pay for. That, that, let me tell you, the footage, you're here, okay, you're here. We are out there. We've been watching. Millions have watched it, and millions have been inspired by you, because the next night, you didn't go away. You came back.